The case they're going to make is 2008. And the case is about delegates. Right? So if you go back, let's go back to May of 2008. It is in the time machine. In May of 2008, what was the fight in the DNC? It was about Michigan and Florida having gone early and having lost all of their delegates because they went out of turn. Hillary Clinton then gets to May, and Barack Obama is real, 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 real close to clinching the magic number of delegates, right? So they have this huge fight over whether they get half delegates or whole delegates. Why was that a thing? Proportionality. The case that can be made, if you are in, if you want to live on the planet that says that you can take down Donald Trump with a former South Carolina governor who, as Lawrence O'Donnell said, has governing experience, she was at the United Nations, say what you want about her politics, but she seems normal to most people and who would probably be a fairly strong general election candidate, the case you make is that she can thug it out if she wants to through July, even losing South Carolina, which is a winner take all state, because other than South Carolina, which is real weird and ironically unfortunate for her, most of these states are proportional. So she's not going to get any delegates out of Nevada because she's not in the caucus. She's on the primary ballot. So that's those 26 delegates. Trump's going to get those. The 50 delegates in South Carolina. I mean, this is a highly evangelical state. She could lose her own state. But a whole lot of these other states, let's talk about Michigan, let's talk about Wisconsin, let's talk about Missouri, let's talk about North Dakota, let's talk about the Virgin Islands, four little delegates. Mm -hmm. The way that proportionality works in American politics is that you can incrementally creep your way to the nomination. And what Barack Obama did in 2008 is he overtook Hillary Clinton through a series of unfortunate events, including Michigan and Florida, losing half their delegates. They wound up making a compromise. They got half of them back. But he delegate creeped his way in caucuses, in small states, getting proportional but, stuff in Texas. Now, I'm not saying she could actually get it. Yeah. But if you're the donor class that wants Trump gone, you tell her, fuck it out for a few months. I'm going to put some more money in your bank account. Because if he gets convicted... You do want to have a candidate with or enough delegates to go yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that can be on the floor and have but a floor that's fight why with this Donald Trump. Isn't 2008? Right. Because the case that you just made, I can guarantee, none of those donors who I spoke to tonight know a single bit of that. <laughs> but they have big, deep pockets, and they know Donald Trump Sounds is like facing 91 charges. But don't they want she's somebody at the convention the that could actually stay? But I mean, you need somebody that's got delegates in hand yeah. at the convention. Yeah. In both so cases, the same. In the same day, it's the it's the rapture. The rapture, the rapture right? The rapture. There needs to still be somebody standing who's not going to get raptured yes. in case there's a rapture. Right. Which, like, that's Ron basically the plan. wanted to be, yeah. but he was such a poor candidate who blew all of his money on private no. jets. Yeah. And yeah. There's Nikki's no just reason for Nikki Haley to get out of the race all. ever unless by the time we get to the election, or by the time we get to the general election, Donald Trump has been acquitted in all of his cases. <laughs> exactly. I mean, other than that happening, well, exactly. there's no reason for her to ever leave. Right, although usually what ends up happening is money dries up, money, right? So yeah. money dries up, and also political pressure is a real thing. Yeah. I mean, she's a member of the Republican Party, presumably wants a future in the Republican Party, and usually what ends up happening yes. is that people come and start to send some message. And it's not like the Trump people are, like, going to be subtle no, about that pressure. The pressure is going to be unbelievably intense. But it it's going to be unbelievably intense. And starting tonight. Yeah. I mean, you totally. know what I mean? Like, it's not going to get... I think you're right. I just think... Fire hose versus fire hose. I agree. I just think it's... Look, her... Clearly, she came out of the gate tonight to speak early to send one message, which is I'm not getting out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Like, right. everything about that speech was to the donors yeah. in that room, to everyone else, was, no, this is not, like... I'm fighting. And in fact, I think she turned up the attacks. It was a little bit of, like, burning the ships. Yeah. Because she turned up the attacks on Trump more than I've seen her in what will be her probably biggest national audience than she ever has, again, to reaffirm she's not getting out tomorrow. But she's Chris, not going to come yeah, back but, tomorrow. But, and I think the and reason for on. that is she has to right now, if you're her, A, she's the last option left. Yeah. B, she wants to preserve maximum options for herself, and C, to the point that we're all making, like, the rapture might come, right? right. People are not total idiots, <laughs> right. and, she, and they and understand she, that there's this huge sort of Damocles hanging over the entire and by proceedings. Way, the argument that she's making, as much as it may infuriate the Biden team, is the age argument actually has legs. Of course it does. Including yes. with some voters that are on his side. So all she has to do is continue to be younger than them, which of course <laughs> biologically she is going to get. She and doesn't... by the way, she's hitting Trump now on his... In his loopy loopy loop stuff he's saying that makes it sound like he ain't all there. She doesn't the face is. the same exact political pressures of other politicians. Here's the other reason why. Do you remember what happened when she was done being the UN ambassador? She got paid.
She got paid from corporate America. She got paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to give speeches. I think she joined Boeing's board. And that's who she's being courted by right yeah. now. Ron DeSantis does, didn't have an exit strategy to join a corporate board. I assure you of that. Disney? <laughs> not available? She's yeah. now operating in a whole new universe of yeah. people that are saying, don't worry yeah, about the pressure, girl. Yeah. Hang tight. That's exactly. Let's bring point. in former RNC chairman Michael Steele. Uh, he's now the co-host of The Weekend right here on MSNBC. Uh, but for our purposes right here, we need to talk to you because you understand the kind of pressure that can be put on a Republican candidate who may want to stay in forever, uh, who nevertheless is, nevertheless is getting pushed by some donors one way and getting pushed by the rest of the party the other way. What do you think of this discussion we're having about Nikki Haley's options, Michael? Well, I, I think it's a spot on in a number of, of, of ways. And it's really interesting because Alex and Joy kind of hit that sweet spot uh, in, in, their, in their comments about where Nikki is right now. And the reality is a, a very straight-up one for her. Um, she did well, okay? South Carolina's ahead. You are 30 to 40 points down, depending on the polls in your home state. Your two state U.S. senators have uh, endorsed the other guy. Uh, your congresswoman and, and other members of your congressional dele delegation have come out and endorsed the other guy. Uh, the state apparatus is forming around the other guy. So... That begins to bubble up a great deal of pressure, as you were talking about. It's not just about how you perform in New Hampshire. It's how you're going to do in the upcoming states. To the conversation around proportionality, it's important to understand that up until March 15th in our Republican primaries, you can, you can get a proportional amount of that vote. Um, Super Tuesday is a part of that. So what you then have is that pressure sort of galvanizing, starting with South Carolina, and then ending up on Super Tuesday among three interest groups here. The first, of course, are uh, those who love Nikki. Nikki, stay in. We love you. Love you. You're doing fine. Don't worry. You can increment your way through this process. Then there's the donor class who are like, OK, uh, I think I want to write you another check. Give me another reason. OK, you did OK in New Hampshire. I'll give you another check. That goes to a lot of what Stephanie was just saying. But then the third piece, which is the more important one, is the rank and file members of the Republican Party. We know them affectionately as the base. They're not voting for Nikki. They don't want Nikki. They've made it very clear now in two states, even one that is supposedly where Democrats and independents could have a strong hand in the outcome. Well, we see what that strong hand met it, you know, brought out for us, you know, an early call for Donald Trump. The base is lined up exactly where the base wants to be. And Nikki's problem is going to be she doesn't have a game plan or a strategy to crack that base.